Hey everyone, I'm Boone and welcome to another episode of Monday Maps. On today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to create this extruded 3D map inside of Adobe After Effects using a premium plugin called GeoLayers, which you can pick up using the affiliate link in the video description. So once I've got the plugin installed, I'm gonna go inside of After Effects and select Window, Extensions, and then open up GeoLayers 3. Essentially what this plugin allows me to do is search geospatial data on the internet and then bring that information into After Effects and use it to create elements and drive my animations. It's a really, really cool plugin. Now down here I have some template projects. I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new project. And over here, the first thing I need to do is create a map comp. So right here I have the map. I can click and drag and move the map around. I can zoom in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom right over here on France, kind of center this up. Now I can rename this if I want. I can change the resolution and the frame rate. Let's say I wanna change this to 24. And let's say I want maybe a 15 second animation instead of 30 seconds. And I'm gonna hit next. And over here I have some different map styles. And right here you notice that some of these are unavailable to me. And that's because when you buy geo layers, you'll also have to purchase the uh, data pack or whatever. And that's a subscription based model. I think you can pay like $20 a month. There's different um, licensing options. You don't have to have it to use certain features of this plugin as you'll see here. But this allows you to use specific things and even opens up some extra tools. Um, just go check out the documentation. There's also a product page available for this on anyscripts.com. So I'm happy with this being Arial style. I'm gonna click Create. That's gonna generate my map comp inside of Adobe After Effects. So now I have my map comp and I have my anchor here. And as you can see right here in the GeoLayers panel, I can click and drag and move this around and it's linked up to my map comp here. So now I need to find that geospatial map data and actually bring those in so I can draw out those features as shape elements. Now I do that in this search online toolbar here. First, I'm gonna search for France so I can get the country outline here. And right here, I have France the country. I have a couple of different options. I can fit it into the map view. I can add a label directly from here or automatically draw the feature from here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it to my browser. And now down here in my browser, I have France. And while it's selected, I can see the outline here. You can see if I deselect it here, I can't see it, select it. So now I'm gonna grab, as you saw in the beginning animation, I basically start at a small little region here, then that zooms out to a province, then that zooms out to the entire country. And I think I got the terms right, region, province, probably not. So now I need to grab that smaller area. I'm gonna type that name in here, and here it is. I'm gonna add that to the browser. Now you can see with that selected, there's the region, there's the country, and now I'm gonna search even the smaller area. Now I'm gonna add that to my browser, and there we go. Now you can see that smaller region here. Okay, so now I have all this data. Now I wanna draw them out as shape elements, but first I need to select the style of how I want After Effects to handle those shape elements. So I do that up here. I'm gonna click on this button here, and I have a bunch of preset styles already ready to go. So I could click on one of these. They have different strokes, um, different fills. There's even a data driven option here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and click on add style. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this. We'll call this uh, 3D France. So I'm gonna grab the fill color here. And I do like this preset green that's kind of fits this color scheme. I'm gonna apply that. And down here I have extrusion, and I'm gonna go ahead and set the extrusion to 100 pixels. Now if you look over here, there's a little cog wheel, and this really speaks to the power of this plugin. I'm not gonna get into it here on this particular tutorial, but if you click this, this opens up um, your data-driven options. So I could essentially use different data values to drive the extrusion. So I could apply this to multiple countries and then use um, like population numbers to drive the extrusion of different countries to create a pretty cool animation. In fact, the creator of this plugin already made a tutorial on that and I'll, I'll link to that in the video description as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Once again, I'll leave that to another tutorial. Now I'm gonna click apply. That edit style is applied or that uh, feature style is applied. And you can see now I have that color reflected in the little symbol, plus there's a little beveled edge, meaning um, kind of telling us that it has an extrusion applied. 
And now down here for each feature, we can see that these are all ready to go as well. So now as I draw these, they're gonna be drawn with that feature style. I forgot to mention these other features here. If I go back to styles, there's a couple of different parameters here. And the one I wanna watch out for is individual layers. I have this selected now, which is what I want. If this is deselected and I grabbed all three of these and tried to draw the feature at the same time, it would apply them as groups in one particular shape layer. And that's not what I want. I want them to break out as individual layers. So I'm gonna grab all three of these here and I'm gonna go down here to the toolbar and click on this little draw features button and I can draw that. And now I should have some extrusion here. And if you look down in the composition or the timeline panel here, you can see that it added all three of those layers as well as two lights. I have a spotlight and I have an ambient light. And if I zoom out here, you can see my spotlight here. And that's really cool because that's gonna ha help add some uh, definition to these extruded elements. Now what I'm gonna do here is actually see the extrusion. I need to move the pitch um, of my map. To do that, I'm gonna hold Control or Command on a Mac, and then I'm gonna click and drag in the GeoLayers panel here, and you can see that that's gonna pivot this in 3D space. And as I release here, I can now see my extrusion elements here. Now if, you have, if you're working on a slower computer, this might um, be pretty intensive. I'm, my system is pretty fast, so this is responding um, um, nicely. But just be aware of that. Might not be responding um, as you see as my computer's responding here in the tutorial. So now you can see that I can click and move my spotlight to adjust that. Um, I can right click and add another spotlight. There's different spot kind of lights that you can add. Um, so I'm gonna add a second one here and move this one around. Just give it a little something else. Now I want this to animate in a specific way out from the, the surface of the earth. I want it to animate out with the extrusion. But the problem is if you look here, I'm gonna grab the France layer. And I'm gonna open up the parameters here. Here I have geometry options. Under geometry options, I have the extrusion depth right now. It's set to 100. So if I start to bring this down, let's bring it down to like 30. If you look what's going on here is the extrusions pulling up toward the layer and now I'm losing my position from the map, which is not how I want it to animate. And don't be worried about the resolution of this map. Um, that's because it's not finalized. So by the end of our animation or our project, I click this finalize button and this is gonna look sharp and beautiful. So don't worry about that. Okay, I'm gonna turn the extrusion back to 100. So the workaround for this is, is that it's an anchor point issue. So right now our anchor point is kind of at the top of this extrusion, so I need to move it down to the bottom. But the problem is, if I do that, then it still animates in a weird way. So what I need to do is I'm going to attach the extrusion depth to my anchor point. So I'm gonna open up my anchor point here by holding shift and hitting A. And if you look at the anchor point options, I have X, Y, and Z. Notice that the Z anchor point is at 100, and that's because our extrusion depth's at 100. So when I apply this, whatever I set the extrusion depth to, it's gonna set that anchor point to that same to make it flat uh, with the surface of the earth. And the reason I say that is so now all the flat earthers can make jokes because they love to do that. Okay, so the way we're gonna make this animation work is I'm gonna grab the pick whip property of my extrusion depth and go all the way up to my anchor point. Go, go, go. And I'm going to attach it to that Z. So make sure you attach it not to just the anchor point, but to the specific Z. And now you can see the expression is applied. And as I move the anchor point here, now you can see that extrusion. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Went way, way too high. Let me go back down to 25. Now you can see it's uh, still matching up with the borders here. Change that back to 100. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the other two layers so that these will be ready to animate. All right, now it's just a matter of animating this. So let's bring the map back to where it was flat here. I just clicked this reset rotation button. That's gonna snap it right back. One other cool tip is if you have this show map comp view, Click on that, that's showing you the kind of the parameters of your resolution because right now we're seeing a lot more. So it's easier to see what you got going on by, by keeping that on. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna have it animate in maybe over two or three seconds. So I'm gonna add a keyframe here at the beginning 
and you can see that that added keyframes to my main map comp. I uh, have latitude, longitude, all these different attributes here. Now I'm going to go to a little after two seconds, and now I'll zoom in, and we'll change the pitch here, and I'm actually just going to grab that one so I can see it. Turn on show map comp view. Okay. And just kind of position this in a way that I'm happy with. So now I want this extrusion of this first area to come up. So I'm going to open up. All I need to do now is select the layer, hit A to open up my anchor point. Now this is the only thing I need to animate now that the extrusion is connected here. So what I will do is I want the extrusion to animate right about here. So this will be my start point. So we'll go from 0 to 100. There we go. I can quickly retime these. So now I'm going to add some easy ease by right clicking, going to keyframe assistant, selecting easy ease. And now I'm going to open up the graph editor and just add something to it there. And now this shoots up a little bit more dynamically, faster at the beginning, slowly. And let's say now I want to have it um, dissolve in as well. So I'm going to add an opacity keyframe. I just held shift and hit T to bring up the opacity attribute. And I'm going to add a keyframe at 100 and 0. So now let's see what this looks like. OK, cool. Now what I can do just to quickly um, animate all of them is copy all of my keyframes here. And now I'm going to grab the next one, paste it on there. And I'm going to grab the next one. and then paste it on there. Now I'm hitting the U key to bring up all the, the attributes that have keyframes. Now if I turn these layers on, we can see that first the region pops up, then the province, and then the entire country. So now I just need to simply add the animations of my main map comp here to kind of zoom out as these go. Okay, so maybe right here, I don't know how this is gonna look, so go right here. And now I'll add another keyframe here. Okay, and move it out a little bit, and then we'll zoom out to maybe here. And for the final one, let's add another keyframe here. And then once it comes out, we'll be out to see the entire country. Maybe I can see more of Europe here. I'm gonna grab the zoom keyframes and I'm gonna add some speed adjustments to this as well. Now for the last step, I just need to finalize this. So this is gonna simply download all of the imagery, the high resolution imagery, and allow me to have a nice, beautiful looking map here. Now you can see as I zoom into 100%, this looks much cleaner, much nicer. So now I can export this out.